All right, so here we are again, and um, as I promised, um, I would like to show you a few more pictures and illustrations that explain parts of the GCMS instrument in more detail. As I mentioned before, a GC sample is loaded either with a syringe or, as in our case, with a spemi fiber into the injector. Here you can actually see the top of the injector again. Here's the schematic of the entire injector port. The sample is evaporated into the hot glass liner, as you can see here, and is then carried with the helium gas, shown here with the blue line, onto the column. This picture shows the capillary column as it is positioned inside the GC oven. It is connected on one side to the bottom of the injector, as shown here, and on the other side to the mass detector. Separation of the volatile compounds on the GC column follows the main principles of column chromatography, as shown in this figure. Compounds A and B, for example, are separated on the stationary phase because of differences in the chemical and physical properties. A detector at the end of the column monitors the eluding compounds. When the compounds are running through the detector, a change in the detector signal occurs and this change is monitored in form of peaks. The baseline and the peaks together represent the chromatogram. Each compound reaches the detector at a specific time after the sample has been loaded onto the column and this time is called the retention time, which is specific for a particular compound. So here's the specific case how volatile compounds are separated on a gas chromatography capillary column. Uh, you can see a mixture of three compounds, one, two, and three, at the beginning of the column. Then these molecules are moving through the column and they are primarily separated by molecular weight and polarity. So smaller molecules like for instance number three will elude earlier from the column than those that are larger or heavier molecules like number one in this case. And in addition those that interact more with the stationary phase on the wall of the column, that again would be one in our case, will leave the column at a later time point than those molecules that do not interfere as much with the stationary phase. In our case, we loaded um, the samples with the SPME fiber, so we didn't have any additional solvent in our sample. If you do have solvent in the sample, those molecules, which are very small, will leave the column uh, as the first uh, molecules and those are shown here uh, with the black dots. Now we also apply a temperature gradient and this temperature gradient helps us to optimize the separation of the compound mixture. So for instance here we're running a gradient of 5 degrees Celsius per minute all the way up to 240 degrees. Um, the temperature gradient is also important in order to speed up the separation process. When the compounds leave the chromato chromatography column, they reach the mass detector as previously described. And this figure shows the principal operating mechanism of such a mass detector or mass spectrometer. The molecules labeled here with M on the right side are bombarded with electrons in an iron box. And during that process, the molecules usually lose an electron and they are converted into positively charged radicals. As you can see here, it's an M plus radical. These are usually not very stable and what happens next is that they do fall apart into smaller fragments, like for instance this F1 plus ion, which is relatively stable, and another radical fragment. Now this a uh, molecule ion might also fall apart into another radical positively charged ion, 
F2 plus radical and a neutral fragment. And this F2 plus radical is again not very stable. And it will fall apart into an even smaller fragment like this F3 plus. And this again then is more stable than just a radical. Now the molecule ion and the stable ion fragments, they will be detected by this quadrupole mass analyzer. And that happens in the way that uh, particular ions with a specific um, mass are flying through these four rods, as you can see here in the left figure. Um, there's an electromagnetic field that is established between these uh, quadrupole rods. And this electromagnetic field will only let one particular ion fragment with a very specific mass through one at a time. And in this way, particular ion fragments or the entire group of ion fragments uh, can be monitored. This group of fragments represents, in the end, the mass spectrum that is very specific for um, a particular compound. So this final figure shows the gas chromatogram and a mass spectrum of one of the volatile terpenes. In this case, it is the monoterpene limonene, which we actually detected in your root samples. So a limonene is shown here as one of the peaks in the um, entire chromatogram. And each peak is uh, represented by the summation of ion fragments that are formed by this uh, molecule. And uh, such a mass spectrum that represents all these ion fragments is shown at the bottom of this figure. So here you see a typical mass spectrum for limonene with the molecular ion that has a mass of 136. And there are two uh, well-represented ion fragments with a molecular mass of uh, 68 and 93. All the lines that you see in this mass spectrum each represent an ion fragment of the limonene molecule. The numbers on top represent the mass of these ion fragments. And you see an entire group of ion fragments. And this is a very characteristic um, group of um, ions. And it's like a footprint or fingerprint of a particular molecule. The window on the right side uh, shows a comparison of this mass spectrum from this particular chromatogram with others in a large database or library that have been collected. Based on the similarity search, the library suggests that this compound indeed is limonene. So now if you want to find out more about what limonene actually means, just Google it on the internet and uh, maybe you find something interesting with regard to this compound in plants and human application.